Don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications. We upload daily and check the source of this video to view all the images and videos if there was any. Bernard Ribello was a friendly, polite resident of the apartment he rented in an upmarket Art Deco block in northwest London. Although neighbours say they found his love of noisy superbikes and sports cars annoying at times, they had no real complaints. With a Rolex glinting on his arm, he would wave and say, hello, as he walked by the tennis courts and manicured lawns to the £500,000 flat he shared with his girlfriend, with whom he had a young daughter. He was a fine example of a hard-working, upwardly mobile, 30-something professional doing well for himself, they assumed. But little did they know that, inside, he was operating a multi-million pound business which twisted the law to sell deadly so-called diet pills to vulnerable people online. That some of these customers ended up dying was something of an occupational hazard. More to the point, neither were they aware that he was storing barrel loads of highly volatile, explosive compounds in his flat, as dangerous as TNT and enough to take out the entire building at any stage. In June, Ribello, 31, was jailed for seven years for manslaughter after an internet trail, following the death of a disturbed young woman, led to his flat in Harrow. There, police found 25 kilograms of DNP, an industrial chemical used in fertilizers, dyes, photography development and wood preservatives, which goes by the chemical name 2,4-dinitrophenol. It is also famed for its fat-burning properties, and the excruciatingly painful deaths it can cause in those who choose to swallow it. It was the first time that anyone has been convicted of manslaughter after selling DNP pills to someone who died as a result. Eight of these pills, processed by Ribello in his makeshift lab in Harrow, killed 21-year-old student Eloise Parry in April 2015. Eloise Parry took highly toxic diet pills bought online as she suffered from bulimia. Bernard Ribello was convicted after her death. The troubled young woman, who suffered from bulimia and had a borderline personality disorder, died in the most horrendous way, according to her family. The drug works by making the body convert energy into heat, leaving victims to cook from the inside. Ribello was tracked down as her supplier using her internet purchase history. As well as highlighting the tragic, needless end of another promising young life, the prosecution exposed the farcical way in which these dangerous drug manufacturers and the internet companies that host their websites cynically run rings around the law. For though the death toll is rising, the National Poisons Information Service says there have been 25 deaths since 2007, including five in the first half of this year, its sale remains largely unregulated. This is because it is not classified as a drug, unlike anabolic steroids, the drug of choice for bodybuilders, but a poison, which, according to the Food Standards Agency, FSA, can be sold for legitimate industrial purposes. It is, however, illegal to sell for human consumption, which means that most websites simply get round this by putting in a small disclaimer somewhere on a page. It is classified as an explosive under UN regulations and the UK Explosive Act 2014, yet it is left to the FSA and the limited budgets of local authority environmental health departments, normally tasked with inspecting restaurants, to bring about prosecutions. For example, the quantity found in Rebelo's flat should have triggered the National Counter-Terrorism Security Office and bomb disposal squads. Instead, Harrow Council had to investigate. Council leader Graham Henson was shocked at the lack of support the council received from police and the Crown Prosecution Service. We were basically on our own, just a local council, using the same laws we used to go after a shop selling out-of-date chicken, he said. Except we were going after this guy's very complex, very slick operation that packaged and sold this deadly chemical online, all around the world. We're just not geared up for that. While Eloise's grieving mother, Fiona, welcomed Rebelo's conviction, she agreed not enough was being done to prosecute those who peddle DNP, and too many were slipping through the net. She blamed the huge, global, and largely untouchable, internet registrar companies that host websites like his, for not taking responsibility. The DNP, fat burner, pills contain an industrial chemical used in fertilizers, dyes, photography development and wood preservatives, which goes by the chemical name 2,4-dinitrophenol. Ella wasn't the first person to die from DNP and she won't be the last, said Fiona, I'm not suggesting for one minute we'll ever completely stop it. But if they shut these websites down and keep shutting them down that would be a step forward, she said. Rebelo's websites were hosted by Canadian company Two Cows, one of the largest domain name registrars on the net, which has not replied to requests for a comment.
As a chemistry teacher, Fiona, from Shrewsbury, Shropshire, knew about the dangers of DNP but had no idea her daughter, who was in the middle of a families and childcare studies degree at Glyndor University in Wrexham, had been buying capsules online. Speaking after the inquest into Eloise's death in July 2015, she said, Eloise was an independent soul who was carving her way through life with difficulty, exploring the world and trying to make something of herself in the process. Living life to the full always involves taking risks. We weigh up the pros and cons and decide whether the risk is worth taking. Eloise decided that even though she had been told DNP was dangerous, being slimmer was worth the risk. She was convinced the dangers were being exaggerated and some days she even thought she was being lied to about it. She was wrong. DNP was initially used during World War I in munitions until, in the 1930s, U.S. scientists discovered it boosted metabolism and burned fat if swallowed. It was sold as a diet pill until 1938 before gruesome side effects started being experienced, including multiple organ failure, cataracts, hypothermia, nausea, muscle rigidity and cardiac arrest. Professor Simon Thomas, director of the National Poisons Information Service, Newcastle Unit, at Public Health England, told Rebelo's trial there is no safe dose of the frightening substance, which kills between 15 to 17 percent of all referred for medical treatment after taking it. That is an enormous mortality. I cannot think of another poison which causes that amount, he said. Previously used almost exclusively by male bodybuilders, he said there is a rise in the number of women taking it to lose weight. Those who buy it are often desperate, and that is something those selling this deadly chemical cynically exploit. And it's terrifyingly easy to get hold of. Indeed, the most cursory of internet searches brings up pages of websites selling DNP, slimming pills, for all around £70 for 100. This newspaper even found it being sold on eBay, who have since removed the sale. Andrea Petrozzi, professor of public health at Kingston University, who conducted the latest research into DNP, says taking it is Russian roulette, as there is no way of knowing the effects. Other victims include medical student Sarah Houston, 23, and bodybuilder Sean Clithero, 28. In 2012, students Chris Mapletoft and Samid Aladdin, both 18. In 2013, bouncer Liam Willis, 24, and Beth Shipsey, 21. In 2017. During Rebelo's trial, the court heard how he lived a lavish lifestyle funded by his DNP business, which included a love of expensive watches, Louis Vuitton bags, Porsche and Corvette sports cars and regular holidays across Europe and the Americas with his girlfriend. In addition to the flat, the couple also lived in a detached, £500,000 mock Tudor three-bedroom house near the Solent in Gosport, Hampshire. Despite having no chemistry or pharmaceutical training, he sold many thousands of pills, using Bitcoin payments, via his now-defunct websites, drmusclepharmaceuticals.com and bionicpharmaceuticals.com. He imported barrels of DNP from China and quickly started to rake in huge sums, with one £350 drum making £200,000. When police raided his flat, they found piles of cash as well DNP pill-making paraphernalia in his makeshift lab. Ribello, who admitted selling DNP, insisted they were not for human consumption. He told the court, I did not expect anyone who bought it to eat it. It has numerous uses like pesticides and paint dye, yet his websites all carried images of muscled and toned male and female figures while recommending dosing information and links to DNP-related threads on bodybuilding forums. His defense was dismissed by the jury. Sentencing him to seven years in prison, Judge Jeremy Dunn, at Inner London Crown Court, said, You indiscriminately supplied DNP, a highly toxic industrial chemical, via the Internet. You had no way of controlling who would purchase it, and it was highly likely those with eating disorders, possibly even the very young and impressionable, would buy it. Beth Shipsey is yet another victim of the diet pill industry. The 21-year-old took diet pills she bought online and died sadly, until there is a change in the law, they continue to do so. Doug and Carol Shipsey, from Worcester, lost 21-year-old daughter Beth in February last year, after she took DNP. Midwife and nurse Carol, who has three other children, said one of the most shocking things is how easy it is to purchase. Beth's arrived hidden in a DVD case with a foreign name on it, said Carol. You just don't think something you buy off the internet that arrives through your letterbox could be that harmful. Part of me feels angry that it's so easily available. 
It's not publicized enough, Carol says Beth, who bought the tablets from the Ukraine, had suffered with mental health problems after being raped by an ex-boyfriend, who is now serving a prison sentence for his crimes. However, she believes that, thanks to counseling sessions, she had started to turn a corner, and like Eloise Parry's mother, Fiona, does not believe her daughter intended to take her own life. Life was very hard for her, but she was beginning to see a future, said Carol. She loved animals and was very passionate about animal rights. She was a talented photographer, too. I still have all the animals she rescued here, it's my link to her. We have rabbits, dogs, cats, rats, turtles and a snake, through tears, she adds, losing her has devastated our life. She was like the color and now the color has gone, everything is bleak and I'm trying to carry on and keep strong, but it's really difficult. We have life before Beth died and life after. It's like I'm a victim of crime and I will forever be punished. Her husband Doug, 53, a company director, cannot understand why DNP is not a regulated substance, particularly when considering how explosive and acutely toxic it is. It should not be left to councils to investigate using food hygiene powers. It's a crime because it's a UN-classified explosive, he said. 30 pills are enough to blow a hole in the side of a plane. If this gets into the wrong hands it doesn't bear thinking about, why isn't something being done to create criminal laws around it? It beggars belief that not only is it not classed as a drug, but it's not being regulated as an explosive, he said other countries, such as the US, France, Belgium and Germany, have all regulated it and Britain is lagging behind. People just don't know of the dangers. We need to constantly keep this in the public eye. In 2015, Interpol issued a warning to 190 police forces across the world about DNP, which it described illicit and potentially lethal. Yet this has done little to dampen supplies. It is bought by dealers such as Ribello, often in powder form from factories in countries, including the Ukraine, Turkey and the US. It is then put into pills in underground labs, in unsterile conditions and with no accurate way for those taking it to know the dosage. Cheryl Gillen, Conservative MP for Chesham and Amersham, the constituency where the NP victim Sarah Houston live, is calling for it to be reclassified as a Class C drug, which would mean possession and supply would be a criminal offence. It's a completely toxic substance and has caused misery and death to so many young people and their families and friends, she said. Meanwhile, the FSA says it is working hard to reduce supply and demand, yet as many of the websites selling it are based abroad, they are outside its jurisdiction. Leeds University medical student Sarah Houston, 23, had been prescribed the antidepressant fluoxetine by her doctor but she was taking the banned fat-burning drug DNP, a pesticide bought from the internet, in secret alongside her medication. Additionally, as it is not classed as a drug, there is only so much the FSA can do without the support of police and other crime-fighting agencies. But when asked about whether there were any plans to classify DNP and to regulate it as an explosive, a government spokesman said as it is a poison, it cannot be considered for control by the Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs. In March this year, Vidotas Gerbatavasius, 21, became one of the most recent casualties of DNP when he died just hours after taking it. Though there has not yet been an inquest to establish the cause of death, his family have no doubt what killed him and are campaigning to get the law changed for DNP to be classified. His father Andreas, 42, a construction engineer who is married to Laura, 39, a quality controller, says his son lived just two miles from Rebelo's flat and, although the origin of the pills he took is not known, believes he may have bought pills from him. I don't know why he took it nor do I know what dosage, he said. On the day he died he telephoned me to say he felt ill after taking it and that he needed help, so I phoned 999. Four hours later, he was dead. Andreas, who moved to Britain 18 years ago from Lithuania, says that he does not want any family to have to go through the pain they have. Before this, I had never heard of DNP. I had no idea such a thing existed in the world. There have been so many deaths in recent years, but people will keep on dying unless the law is changed and the government starts to effectively tackle the sale of this deadly substance. This cannot be allowed to continue.